Veronica, thanks very much for joining me today. So, um, can I ask you to start by just telling me a bit about your background and your current role? Yeah, um, well, I'm currently um, the digital and social media manager for the PRC Magi Healthcare. Um, my role is to um, ensure that the uh, digital PR strategy for GE Healthcare um, includes uh, the digital and social media component and also to make sure that the PR team has all the tools and resources and information uh, 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 about digital and social media and make it available for them. As for my background, I've always worked in PR, uh, in, uh, both in companies and agencies, and I've been working in digital and social media over the past two years. Now, there's so many channels that you can use to connect with prescribers, with patients, with payers. Which ones do you think are the most important and why? Well, I think it's, uh, it will be difficult to say there is one channel that is the most important. I think uh, they are all critical and they sh you, you should consider th them all as part of your campaigns, your announcements, your projects. Um, it's all about 360 degrees storytelling. So, for example, in our case, um, we've got the G Healthcare Newsroom, which is uh, the news hub for, for all the channels for all our news, 24-7 across all regions globally. Um, uh, but we also ne need the support of other platforms to, to help amplify uh, the message. So, for example, we, we use Twitter, we use Flickr, and we use uh, and YouTube. In the case of YouTube and Flickr, so, for example, YouTube is, is, the, is the channel for all our videos. Flickr is the channel for all our images. And they both take the visitor back to the newsroom uh, to amplify or, or to, to get more information about what they want to know. And then Twitter, again, is, is, is the channel where we, we spread our news. And so, yeah, I mean, I think all the channels should be equally important and depending on what you're trying to achieve. Now, within the drug world, the lack of regulations by the FDA, the EMA around social media is to some extent holding back use of these channels. There's a perception that this is maybe less of an issue for medical devices, but do you think that's really true? Having social media guidelines will be beneficial um, and, and of course, uh, you know, as long as we give the information that is fair and balanced and that accurately reflects the use of our products, uh, we, we will be fine. Um, GE Healthcare constantly monitors uh, all the comments online and in case the, just in case there is an adverse report or a customer compliant, we can fully investigate and make sure that we take action into that. So um, I think in that sense, that's, that's those are the main difference in, in with the pharma, but on the other hand, uh, you know, we, we, we are also facing regulations. Are there other industries or perhaps specific campaigns that you think have been influential on the way that GE Healthcare is dealing with social media? So, um, I think when we first started, we looked at companies like Microsoft, Visco, Ford, who had already a very strong uh, social media presence. And over the, la the last couple of years, we've been looking at the companies in healthcare like Roche, Pfizer, the Mayo Clinic, Beringer, Ingelheim, who I think they're doing a great job uh, working internally to uh, find the ways to, to, to work in social media in a compliance way. So, um, for example, I, you know, I found that it's very brave what Roche did when they published their social media guidelines for employees. And I love, for example, how Beringer, Ingelheim um, uses their Twitter account. I just think it's really fresh, it's really real, really human, and I think they're doing a great job. So um, that's probably what we're getting from externally. And then uh, across GE, from the different businesses, we're sharing best practices, and that's also helping us a lot to shape uh, our digital social media strategy at the PR team. Okay, and if you, if you look at what you have done within GE Healthcare, which campaigns are you most proud of and which do you think have been the most successful? Okay, well, for a start, uh, as I said, our GE Healthcare newsroom uh, is, is, is what we first launched and is, is definitely like the number of visitors is growing exponentially every month. Uh, we're very pleased with the results so far. We see the content is being used, uh, being reposted, being tweeted, and, and obviously we're, we're reading an, a good audience. Um, the next step for this, I think, is to make it more conversa conversational. So we can, you know, I would like to be able to engage with, with our readers and our visitors. Um, another great example is a campaign that we have ongoing right now, which is called Get Fit, and it's a Twitter online competition to promote cancer awareness. So we're asking people to, to, to tweet their health tips or secrets, 
and um, and I think again this is uh, this has been successful in in two ways. First of all, it was a big challenge internally to make it to make it real and to make it live, and and also externally on the day of the launch we had a. a 160% increase in the number of visits to the newsroom where, where that's where the the, the, the site is, is being hosted. So, you know, th those two could be uh, good examples. Also, the health imagination team at G Healthcare, for example, are doing great applications that have received awards already, like, for example, I'm expecting, which, which is an, an application that tracks um, uh, how what's happening to you and your baby. Uh, so that's, for example, number one health uh, app in 22 countries. And there are a couple of more that are being very successful as well. And certainly the, um, the Get Fit campaign you mentioned there, I've seen a lot of noise about on Twitter, so it does seem to have been extremely successful. W when you look at these campaigns that you've done, what are the key things that you've learned from doing these different things? Um, well, I think uh, making sure that you know your audience and you know where they are, and making sure that you make it easy for them to get your information but also to give you feedback and, and to know how it's going. So that's one of the things that I'll say I've learned. Um, another thing, of course, is like make sure that your legal team is your best friend. They're involved from the beginning in the project and, and, and they, they're going to help you make this uh, real and, and make it live. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's, it's very difficult. So um, those probably are the, are the key things. And what about the audience that you're trying to reach? So in other words, the prescribers, the patients, the general public. Do you get much feedback from them on the impact these initiatives have had? So, well, uh, as you say, it depends on the audiences that you're reaching. Now, I think, for example, in the case of the Get Fit campaign, because it's more a consumer campaign, it obviously it's is easier to engage and, and to get the people um, talking about it. But we still uh, know our content is being used, it's being reposted. We know our audiences who is coming to the newsroom. And we also like to uh, create the content with them. So, for example, in the case of, of our customers, we've got a series of, um, of stories in the newsroom, which is called Innovation in Action. So we're asking our customers to participate and create content with us to tell their stories, how they're using the technology, how it's making the, changing the, the way they work. Um, and we want more, more of this to happen in the future. So if we sort of cast our minds maybe five or ten years ahead, Veronica, what do you think G Healthcare and yourself, what do you think you'll be doing in the social media space at that point? So this year we're making big progresses. I'm very pleased how things are going. I can see more openness, more flexibility, more willingness to, to make this uh, work. Um, I'm, I'm really expecting that in, in the next years as we auto-regulate ourselves, and we work, as I said, with our legal and, and regulatory teams. We will find the ways to, 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 to make this a success and, and make social media work in the way that it should be uh, like an engagement channel with your audiences. So in five, ten years, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that we will be there and we will be able to use these this channels to its full potential. There's, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Veronica, thank you very much for your time. It's great to speak with you and hear the inside view from uh, what some of the big healthcare companies are doing. So thanks very much. Thanks to you and, and to Pharma Forum for your interest. Thank you.